Welcome to another instructional video from EGIS Associates. This video is going to be about creating map books using the data-driven page functionality found within ArcMap. So within this video we hope to make you understand what data-driven pages are, how to enable them, requirements for using this functionality, and then how to print and export your data-driven pages. So what a data-driven page does or, or what this functionality enables is an ability to create a map book or atlas over a designated area. And key to that is an index. The index defines the pages that will make up your map book or atlas. It, it defines the area that each page is going to cover and where that is and then the order in which they're going to appear in your map book or atlas. And there are three types of indexes that you can use you can use a grid index. This is your traditional index uh, of rectangles or squares organized in rows and columns that are really great for covering you know, large areas. So this could be for your city's water system or for zoning or uh, for voter districts, what, whatever you're trying to show within a city or county based area. The next type is a strip index. So this is gonna be an index that follows linear features. It could be a road project, it could be utilities, uh, such as water, sewer, gas, or electric. It could be uh, subway lines, uh, trails, anything that would be linear in nature. You can build an index that follows those features. And as you can see in the slide here, that each one of these uh, rectangles or squares that make up the index are gonna rotate to follow those linear features. And then lastly, there's something we call an irregular index. And this is where you can use any layer in your map as the index. So you can see here the state of Georgia. So I could create a map book where each county in the state has its own page within the map book dedicated to it. But I could also use it for monitoring stations um, at a waste, waste disposal site or all of the fire hydrants within a water system or um, each council district within a city uh, you name it. I said in the case of an irregular index, any layer that's in your map can be used for the, the purposes of the index. Okay, So again, the purpose of the index is to describe or define the pages that make up the map book. Okay? So when we go to, to set this up, when we're going to enable data-driven pages, there are some steps we need to do uh, before we just enable it. So the first is obviously we have to create our map. That means we've got to insert our layers, set up our symbology, set up our labels, get all that done just like we would for any map we're creating. Then we're gonna uh, create or insert that index, uh, that, that layer that defines the pages that will appear in our map book. Then we're gonna go in and create our layout. I'm gonna go in and define, is it portrait, landscape, set up our title block information. Now this is going to be a little bit different than your traditional map uh, because remember this is going to be a page in a book so you need to often adjust uh, to make room for binding on whatever side, the, the left, the top, the right, whatever, wherever you're going to bind it. You need to make sure there's room for that. You need to figure out um, you know, how much area you need to dedicate to that map view, right? which then kind of leads you into the next step, which is determining the scale, right? So how big do you need to make the view on the page to print at the desired scale? And, and maybe you don't care what the scale is. Uh, you just want it to fit. But there may be other instances, uh, for example, if you're working with utilities, that you do need it to a set scale so that somebody out in the field can take some measurements and maybe locate a valve by measuring off other features like a, a light pole that may be there or uh, a building or something along those lines uh, there. So you, know, you need to kind of think through those. And then once you've done all that, then you're gonna enable the data-driven pages using the data-driven pages toolbar that we'll demonstrate in a moment. If you don't happen to have an index, uh, ArcMap does have tools that will allow you to do that. If you go into Arc Toolbox, and the cartography toolbox, and then into the data-driven pages tool set, you'll see two tools in there, the grid index features and the strip map index features. Those tools will 
step you through the process of creating an index if you don't already have one. Now, we're not going to demonstrate that in this video. If you would like to see those two tools in action, please leave a comment uh, below the video. And if we get enough interest, we'll try to create a video on how to use those tools. But they're fairly self-explanatory. So let's get into a demo of how this works within ArcMap. So here you can see I'm in uh, ArcMap. I've gone ahead and created my map by inserting all my layers, getting my symbology set up. And I've gone in and brought in an index. So I already had an index for the city. Uh, this is the same index they use for all of their map books. So I've got that set up. Now I'm going to go into my layout. And I've already taken the time to design the layout, uh, setting it up for 11 by 17, which I have found to be very good for field use. It's big enough that you can see uh, a good amount of detail at a decent scale, uh, but not so large that it's uncomfortable to use out in the field. So again, that's what I traditionally use is this 11 by 17. And I've gone ahead and put in a title, a north arrow, a scale, a legend, some of the basic components that you find in a, in a layout. Uh, this one would be set up to be bound on the left side. So I've got some room in there for that. And now I'm ready to begin enabling my data-driven pages. The first step to do that is to turn on the data-driven pages toolbar. And a couple of ways you can turn that on. You can go up to the gray area here at the top of ArcMap and right click and choose it from there. Or you can also go to Customize Toolbars and pick it from here. So turn that on and there's my data-driven pages toolbar. So now I just simply click on the Data Driven Page Setup button here at the, the far left of the toolbar. And it opens the Setup Data Driven Pages window. So first step, I've got to enable it. So I click on the checkbox here. That's now enabled. And I'm going to come down and pick a data frame. Notice I only have a single data frame in the map uh, document here. So that makes it easy. And this layer here is referring to what is the index layer going to be. So I'm going to pick that from my map index. My name field, what am I going to name the pages? So map no works. My sort field, how do I want to sort these, put them in order? I'm going to use map no as well. It is possible for those to be two different fields. Um, and the reason you might have a separate field for sorting versus name is that if you're using straight numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on, um, if that is a text field as opposed to a numeric field, it would go 1, 10, 2, 3, 4, you know, 30. You know, it, it's going to put things in, in not numeric order if it's a text field. So you may have a different sort field that would have zeros padded in there, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, which... Uh, if it goes up to 20, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep them in the right order. So reason you might have that. Uh, in this case, it's they're the same thing, so it's not a big deal. Uh, also, if you want to have a different page number field that keeps track of the number of pages uh, in there, uh, again, I'm using the same field for this. Now, once I've set up this definition for that, I'm going to go over here to my extent. And this is the scale. How do I determine the scale that uh, will be used for the map view area in my layout? Uh, do I want best fit? Do I want to set, center and maintain current scale? Or do I have a field in my attribute table for my index that I can uh, point to? So in this case, I actually do have an attribute field called print scale that I'm going to, to use. Okay. I'm going to click OK. So now that I've done that, I have enabled data-driven pages within my map document. So that functionality is now active. You'll also notice how quickly uh, my view area zoomed to the area of one of the tiles. You can kind of see the red coming through around this, this border here. And with that, the data-driven pages toolbar functionality becomes active. So I can use the center area up here to navigate through the individual pages. I can go one at a time. I can go to the very last page, back to the very first page. I can also type in a specific uh, map number that I want to look at 
So say GZ-267. And under that, and you can see my map has now zoomed to that page within my uh, map book based on the index, which is identified by that uh, tile number. If you see that, I can open the attribute table for the index by clicking on this button on the data drone pages toolbar. And you can see here's the data table for that index layer. You can see the map number here and how it's being numbered by these grids. Similar to cells uh, in an Excel spreadsheet where I've got a alpha character dash a number character, right? So this is going to identify the column and this is going to identify the row. And this, using this kind of number scheme makes it very easy to expand uh, or subtract from the index in a way that makes logical sense. As opposed to if you just did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you had to add a page somewhere or a tile for the index somewhere in the middle there, you'd have to renumber everything and that could be problematic. This just allows for easy growth or uh, taking away tiles from that. So this other button you'll see on the Data Driven Pages toolbar is the refresh button. So if I were to come in and make a change to this index layer, I would, if I were to take away um, a tile, Right, so if I zoom, I should just zoom to that, but if I were to take away one of these tiles or add a, a tile such as this uh, little gap here, I would need to refresh the data-driven pages to reflect that new page being added. Or if I were to come over here and delete one of these over here or one of these up here, uh, again, I'd need to refresh that to reflect that change to the, the index. So once I have this built and enabled here, there's some things I might want to do, such as if I want to put it so I have text that auto updates identifying the page name, page number. This is where the page text, this is uh, dynamic text. So I can put in the page name. See it automatically drops it in the center, so I need to pull it down. I like to put my page numbers down here in the lower right corner. Um, again, I can change the properties of that just like you do any of your, your text. So I'm going to click on the Change Symbols button. So now with the Symbol Selector up, I can change the font here so it's uh, more legible. So I'll make it 24 and bold. Click OK. OK to that. So now you can see the page number is there. And as I go through the book, one page at a time, that number is auto updating. You have several options here. Uh, you can go ahead and put in the page name, page number, page with count, uh, use a display expression, and then data driven page attribute. So, a, uh, an attribute that pops up that maybe defines that page or something associated with that specific map page can also be inserted in here. Once you have this all set up, now you're ready to, to print. You can go to your standard print button up here, click it. And when you do that, uh, it's going to be pretty much like your normal print window that you're accustomed to when printing any map, with the exception of this area down at the bottom. Data Driven Pages uh, panel has been added in there. And this is where you can control what you print. You can do all the pages in your map book, just the current one. If you selected certain pages within the index, just those or you can specify a range of pages, either individually or group ranges uh, to do that and hit OK and that will print it out. You can also export your data driven pages out to another file format. So if you go up to file and down to export map, okay, you can choose any of the normal uh, file types that you export to. Now, if you choose anything other than PDF, it will only ex it'll only export the current page out. If you choose PDF, then you'll get an added tab in here called Pages, and this is very much like the uh, panel you saw in the the print dialog box here. So you can choose, you know, again, all the current page selected or a range of pages. Uh, you also have the additional option of how do you want to export it? Do you want it to go to a single PDF so that you get one map book of all the pages and one single PDF? Or do you want each page to go out 
to its own individual PDF. And that would be these two other options down here, either by the name or by the index uh, with that. So you can choose which one of these you want to do. So this will do one big PDF of all the pages in the book or the individual PDFs for each page uh, separately. So you can choose those options here. Of course, make sure you remember where you save them. And all these other options that you would do with PDFs, you know, the resolution, the format with colors and so on, uh, security if you want to enable that, or these advanced settings with uh, making it a smart PDF so you can turn on and off layers or even access attributes is still available to you. So you can do any of, of those. So pretty, pretty straightforward and easy to use uh, functionality. This is all the, the basics in there. There is more. You can add a separate um, data frame in here that corresponds back to the main page. So it auto updates and kind of shows you what the surrounding uh, map pages would be if you need that. There's other more advanced options uh, in here, but we're not going to cover those in this uh, particular video. Again, if you'd like to see that, please let me know and we can do a separate video on some of that additional functionality. Okay, so that is a, about it. That is the very basics on how to use uh, data-driven pages. Um, again, this was produced by EGIS Associates. We're helping you to consume the power of place with current technology standards and applied spatial intelligence. If you need any help with your GIS, we can help you with enterprise uh, implementation, systems integration, application development, strategic planning, needs assessments or health checks. Uh, we do provide rent -a -tech services, so if you need assistance updating data, building a database, performing analysis, uh, we can do that for you, as well as training and support. So, hope you've enjoyed the video, hope you've learned a lot from it. If there's anything you can, or we can do to help you, please let us know. Here's our contact information. You can visit our website at www.egisassociates.com. Uh, give us a call here in the U.S. at 678-710-9710 or just shoot us an email at info at egisassociates.com.